the Axis Assembly, a 5-axis CNC machine for precision. Hi guys! It has not been easy to make progress on this 5-axis CNC machine project, but I was at last able to assemble the A-axis. I am very happy to be able to share this creative assembly of the A-axis with you. In fact, I realized something important while I was assembling the A-axis over drinks, as I always do. I realized that if the women of the world saw my video of me assembling the A-axis with such a cool voice and such a cool assembly, they would be very excited and would send me many messages and other things. I was worried that I would be very busy and not be able to respond to their messages. But no problem, genius that I am. I prepared a lot of messages in advance to reply to them immediately. This will save the women of the world from despair. That's why this project was delayed. Please understand that this is for the women of the world. Anyway, this time, I am going to assemble the A-axis on the 5-axis CNC machine. This design is a challenge beyond the norm and pushes the limits of accuracy at the DIY level. Let me explain the structure of axis A. This axis has two tapered bearings with 20 mm inner diameter, one on each side, and is preloaded to prevent it from rattling, since the C axis is mounted on the A axis. This axis must be strong. I believe that the structure of the A axis is strong enough for this purpose. But, as a result of the emphasis on miniaturization of the machine as a whole, the A-axis is embedded in the column. This structure is reinforced by the frame of the A-axis, but I am a little concerned whether this is sufficient. One of the unique features is the use of two sets of warm gears to eliminate backlash. When most people hear the word warm gear, they think of gear like this, these are made from some kind of larvae from Japan and that I don't know what they are. Perhaps they are tasty, but they are not appropriate as parts for CNC machines. The reason is that this type of gear can easily change its accuracy as each worm moves around in search of food. Also, they will eventually turn into chrysalises and fly away as butterflies. That would be very sad. So in this case, I decided to use metal worm gears to maintain accuracy and rigidity. This design eliminates backlash by applying light pressure in opposite directions to each other. Of course, each part must be assembled with high accuracy otherwise it will not work properly. The most important part is the worm wheel unit to which the worm wheel and taper bearing are attached. The worm wheel unit requires some important adjustments. The axis of rotation of the A-axis must be accurately perpendicular to the worm wheel. The center of the worm wheel must be accurately concentric with the axis of rotation of the A-axis. The tapered bearing must be press-fitted into the housing to eliminate rattling. Adjust the width of the frames on both sides to give preload to the bearings. You must not be able to resist wanting to know how I make these adjustments and assemblies with my limited tools and work environment. I can clearly hear the women who are so excited about how great this video is. What a great channel Wesson CNC Freak is. I can't stop subscribing to it. Some might say that hearing voices from women in a situation where 99% of the viewers on this channel are male is an auditory hallucination created by the desires of an ugly drunk. But, I think, but, perhaps it is. Anyway, this is the first difficult step. Next are the two worm shafts.
These shafts use two small angular bearings each. These also need to be preloaded. The method of applying preload is to tighten them with nuts. Finally, I will assemble them all together. Let's start. First, press fit the outer ring of the taper bearing into the housing. The housing side is about 1 by 100 smaller than the outer ring of the bearing, so of course it cannot be inserted without using a device. I think vices are very useful. I believe that there should be a vice in every household, just as there are kitchen knives and cutting boards in every home. For those of us with limited equipment, it is very important to perform machining during assembly processes. Specifically, this means operations such as making tap holes that correspond to the first holes drilled. This allows for a higher accuracy in assembly. Let me explain it a little more clearly. One day I had reserved a table with a night view at a cool bar to talk about world peace with a beautiful woman. However, there was an ugly drunk sleeping there. Being the gentlemanly guy that I am. Being the gentlemanly guy that I am, I had a gentlemanly discuss with the waiter and asked her to get me another table. The important thing was to have a good time with her. Not to have a good time with her, but to talk about world peace with her. In other words, even if the first drill hole is a little off from the planned location, as long as the drill hole and the tapped hole are aligned, everything is fine. Apply preload to the bearings to be the same as when they are actually assembled. Check if the base for mounting the worm wheel is perpendicular to the axis, and correct it if it is misaligned. It's completely crazy, just like my head. Don't worry about it. Everybody knows that it just assembles and does not have a high assembly accuracy, and that I am crazy. I just adjust it. I think it is accurate enough like this. It is hard to measure accurately because of the rough surface, but it will probably be fine. The next step is to install and adjust the worm wheels. Again, make the threaded holes to match the bolt mounting holes already drilled in the worm wheel. First, 
temporarily install the worm wheel and align the center of the worm gear with the center of the axis of rotation. Then, determine the position of the screw holes. Roughly adjusted. In this process, the adjustment is temporary, so there is no need to adjust it accurately. First, complete only one screw hole, then remove the seat clamps. Otherwise, the seat clamp will interfere with the drill chuck, and drilling will not be possible. Adjust the other worm wheel in the same way and complete the screw holes. The real adjustment is about to start. The screw holes should have been carefully aligned, but it seems that they were not machined with sufficient accuracy. The center of the worm wheel cannot be adjusted, but such things happen so often that I forget to zip up my pants and go to work. I just zip them up, hoping no one notices. That freak's pants are zipped fully open. Very gross. I can't hear anything. Anyway, it's the same thing this time. 
No one will notice the bolt holes in the worm wheel if I modify them. One side went well. I was able to adjust by less than 0.01 millimeter. This is enough adjustment. The next step is to adjust the worm wheel on the other side. If this works, my women fans all over the world must be very excited. Well, I was able to adjust it to within 0.02 millimeter. I think this level of accuracy is sufficient. Isn't it amazing to be able to make such a cool adjustment in such a poor working environment? I was actually thinking of an excuse in case it didn't work out, but it seems I don't need one. What a cool job I do. I can hear the cheers from women all over the world. I can't believe he can do that. It's so cool. This guy is crazy cool. He's a total freak. That freak's pants are zipped fully open. Oh yeah. Auditory hallucinations aren't so bad. The next step is to make the worm shaft. I used this worm for this project. I considered using a natural worm, but I decided to use an artificially made worms because of accuracy and strength issues, and because I did not want to receive any complaints from animal welfare groups. More importantly, I don't want to see a worm moving around in a machine. Let's start. I will be making a thread on the outside diameter of 6 mm shafts. The threads on the outside diameter can be made without using a lathe. In fact, threads on a shaft of 6 mm or less can be easily processed using a thread cutting die. I was working on it and cut my hand. But don't worry. I'm already very drunk so I didn't feel anything. I'm almost a zombie.
It is a very meaningful time to enjoy metal working, drinking alcohol, watching zombie movies, and becoming a zombie myself. I would like to assemble the entire A-axis, but there are parts that I have not yet made, so I will make some of them. This is making a stepper motor bracket. The parts have been completed. I will now assemble the parts, making adjustments as I go. The important thing here is to adjust the distance between the frames on both sides so that the bearings are properly preloaded. Something is wrong. The worm wheel is completely interfering here. It can be. Let's check the 3D model. Oh my god. This part was supposed to be installed here. I can't believe a professional like me could make such a mistake. Maybe my pants were zipped fully open and that's why I'm so upset. Let's have a drink and forget about it. This is an angular bearing. Unlike regular bearings, two or more angular bearings are used together to give preload.
When I was thinking about installing the frame on the left side, I felt that it would be better to have an opening for adjusting the worm gear and for maintenance. So I decided to do some additional machining. Nicely done. As was the theme of the last video, this machining was done without using a cam. If you're interested, watch part 9 of the video. This is very bad. I am going to run out of whiskey soon. This will reduce productivity. It might also affect assembly accuracy. Let's drink it carefully. It is complete. Overall, I think it went well. For the next video, I would like to run the stepper motor to see how it works. I have not actually tried it yet, so I am not sure if it will work. Hopefully it will perform as well as I plan. If it works well, the C-axis should work well too. If it doesn't work at all, please laugh. If you are interested in this project, I suggest you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any videos. If you empathize with my project, why don't you become a member and support this channel? There are a few benefits, but as long as you are a member, your name will appear at the end of the videos as a patron. In other words, you can be a part of this project. So, please look forward to the next video.